If there is one key feature in every aesthetic physique, it's the presence of big, round, capped shoulders. The best method of achieving this has been twisted and overcomplicated. So I'm going to rank 24 of the most common shoulder exercises objectively, so you know what the best movements are. Now, at the end of the day, you can grow your muscles with any exercise, giving you train hard, eat enough, and you enjoy it. But for the sake of the video, there's gonna be three key features on how an exercise is ranked. How well does it work the target muscle? How easy is it to progressive overload? And how well can it be taken to failure? We'll start at the front with exercises that primarily work the front or anterior delt. Now, these are typically overdeveloped in people just because it gets so much work from pushing movements such as incline presses. However, it's not an excuse to sleep on them. First on the list is a seated dumbbell shoulder press. Now this is a staple exercise for a lot of gym goers. It's accessible and can be done in any gym with great potential for progressive overload. The use of dumbbells allows you to follow an arm path that's most comfortable for you, minimizing the risk of injury. However, this same freeness reduces the overall stability of the exercise. Meaning it requires a lot more coordination to grind out those final few reps, which in turn reduces the overall recruitment of muscle fibers. That being said, this exercise is still broken and anything less than ATR would be criminal. It only makes sense to follow that up by discussing the standing dumbbell shoulder press. Whilst this equally, if not more accessible, adding the variable is standing to this exercise is going to introduce a large workload for your core and the recruitment of those muscle fibers in turn will drop. Simply look at it like if you're not overhead press the same weight standing versus sitting down, you're getting a lot more reps out of your sitting down. This is a DTM movement. And whilst we're on the topic of standing, we might as well address the standing barbell press. People get their feelings hurt a lot when I say this, but for the exact same reasons as the standing dumbbell press, if you're trying to grow your shoulders, this is a DTM movement. Okay, seated barbell shoulder press. Like the standing versus seated dumbbell shoulder press, if you're trying to grow your shoulders, this seated variation is superior in every way. Way too many people value working their core in hypertrophy exercises. If you want to be an athlete, that's completely fine. This list just probably isn't for you. This is going in A tier. We'll continue with a seated Smith Machine shoulder press. You should definitely consider adding this into your split. The fixed path has an extra element of stability the other variations don't have. And as a result, we have our first S tier movement. The next exercise is the Arnold press. Now, this used to be a controversial opinion, but I think a large amount of people now realize how ridiculous this movement actually is. By adding a little twist at the bottom to work all three heads, you have to significantly reduce the load on the front and side delt for practically no extra stimulus. If you love it, that's great. But sorry, Arnold, it's going in D tier. All right, front raises. We have three variations here. Dumbbell, cable, and plate. Before I rank any of them, do I think any of these exercises are necessary? No. You will get plenty of stimulus from a typical overhead press, plus they're easier to progressive overload. But if you do want extra work, they're not horrendous. We'll start with dumbbells. It's going to work the front delt, and you can take it to failure. I just don't think it's worth it though. B tier. Cable front raises. Easier to progress on with constant tension. I think they're a step up from dumbbells. I'll put it in A tier. Plate front raises. Now this looks cool, but it's actually just silly and the max weight you can do is 20 kilos. Stick to dumbbells if you don't have cables. D tier. Plate loaded slash machine shoulder press. I'll start this by saying that not all machine shoulder presses are good. <coughs> Hammer strength. But the good ones are, oh, you'll be locked in with a fixed arm path in an incredibly stable environment where going to failure and recruiting muscle fibers will not be a problem. And you guess where I'm putting this? That's right. S tier. That's the front delt done. Instead of going from the front to the back, I thought I'd jump from the most overworked to the most underworked. The rear or posterior delt. I rarely train this head of my delt toy for the first year of my gym journey. And as a result, my shoulders look trash. Now, I attribute a lot of that to the fact that it's very hard to connect with rear delt exercises for me personally. But if you want bolder shoulders, having a popping rear delt will take you a long way. We'll start with the most accessible, a dumbbell rear delt fly. You can do this exercise easily in literally any gym and it targets the rear delt, meaning it's a pretty damn good exercise. The technique and coordination requires a little bit of practice, but with time, this can easily become a stable exercise if you want some juicy rear delts. I'm giving it a B only because I think there are better options. All right, face pulls. In a similar vein to before, very accessible. The only problem is, as you continue to progress and get stronger, the more difficult this exercise becomes to perform. The demand to stabilize goes up and you either have to use a heap of core or start doing some Sam like bench setup. Either way, I just think it's not ideal and as a result, I think it's a C tier. The reverse pec deck. Now, most gyms should have a pec deck, and if yours doesn't, I'm truly sorry, because this is truly one of the better readout exercises. It's seated with a fixed path, meaning all effort can be focused on targeting those readouts. The stack typically allows for easy progressive overload as you can boost the weight in small increments, and you really shouldn't have any issues going to failure. S tier. Rear delt row. Okay, so this is more of a back slash pull day exercise, but it's still great for your rear delts, just like any upper back movement will be. A row like this will be super easy to progressive overload on and going to failure will be pretty easy as well. I would put it in S tier, but the involvement of the traps and the rhomboids will probably take away from the overall motor unit recruitment of the rear delts. So it's getting an A tier. Rear delt skiers. These are like a combination of a dumbbell rear delt fly and a row, and they're pretty good. If you struggle with my muscle connection for the rear delt, this is an exercise worth trying. It's a solid A tier. All right, and the last rear delt exercise. The rear delt 
what cable fly. Perhaps considered by many as optimal, this variation for the rear Dallas is quite exquisite. You have the constant tension and the easy pressure overload from the cable, the adjustability to create whatever arm path you desire, and the accessibility of only needing a cable machine. I don't personally connect with it, but I can recognize its greatness. S tier. All right, that's the readout done. Now it's time for what you've been waiting for, the big boys. The one head that will bring you wide, thick shoulders the side doubt. We'll start simple with a dumbbell lateral raise. There are three main variations, chest supported, seated, and standing. We'll go from worst to best. The standing dumbbell lateral raise has got to be the coolest looking exercise in the gym. Your shoulders look huge, and quite honestly, you feel awesome. However, it's also the most cheated. Majority of people will bounce their reps out and use way too much trap involvement. I think it's the worst out of the three, but it's still a B tier. Next, the seated dumbbell lateral raise. By taking a seat, you remove a large amount of the core requirements from this exercise, allowing you to be a lot more isolated for the side delt than if you were standing. It's an A tier exercise. Now, let's take it up a notch. Chest supported dumbbell lateral raise. Here, you're isolating the side delt as much as you can while still using dumbbells. Motor unit recruitment would be very good, and the only thing holding it back from making an S tier is it can be very hard to progressive overload with dumbbells. So, it's an A tier but it's above seated. Barbell upright rows. Now this cops a lot of hate and demonization online. People will love saying it'll destroy your shoulders and cause injuries. Are they wrong? Uh, there's some merit behind these claims. But in terms of a movement you can easily progress on for the side delt, I think this is pretty good. I'll give it a B tier. All right, cable lateral raises, another optimal exercise. This movement will humble you with its constant tension and the ability to isolate the side down. It's pretty easy to progressive overload on as with most cable exercises, the stack allows you to make small incremental jumps in weight and you shouldn't have many problems taking it to failure. We have our first S tier for the side down. We'll back that up with cable Y raises, a slight variation where you bring the D handles up above you instead of out to the side. I think if you're trying to mix things up, this is a great option and much like the cable lateral raise, it deserves an S tier. Next, we have seated machine lateral raises. Now you might think, oh, Jack, you froth machines. This is an easy S tier. Well, not quite. Typically, these machines are great as they provide great stability and easy progressive overload. However, they often force you to work in the frontal plane instead of the scapula, which is not ideal for isolating the side delt. So because of the large trap involvement this probably includes, it's only an A tier. Okay, so seated done. What about standing machine variations? Well, this is a bit better. You can adjust this more easily to work the side delt in the scapula plane, plus it provides all the benefits of the seated variation. This would be my go two side delt exercise and therefore it's an S tier. And that's the tier list done. 24 exercises all rank from worst to best for hypertrophy. Let me know what you disagree with. I'm sure some of this is very controversial and I'm open to changing my mind. Until next time, happy lifting.